woke up while nature was sound asleep. So I could marvel at its kingdom. I strolled through its lush gardens and saw every little wonder up close. Here, you can dance with giants, discover a feast for the eyes, and a feast for the appetite. Walls that hold heroes' stories told me of their bravery. While sacred places blessed my journey. I roamed places that stood the test of time. And others that were there since the beginning. I wake up to a feast. Where I can sink my teeth into history. Or shock my taste buds with something new. It's here I learned the color of sweetness. Expanded my pantry. And my appetite. Every next bite only leaves you hungry for more. I just woke up from the time of my life. It started with a major throwback. Then I got to meet the big shots. I found a sweet spot between cultures and hung out with the artsy crowd. I even picked up a few things along the way. After that, things kicked into overdrive. It started with a whirlwind through the streets. An unforgettable eats. A celebration of flavor in every bite. And an epic new party at every turn. The best thing about it here, the good times are never over. Mabuhay, you're now boarding GPS TV. I'm Aya Fernandez, your online travel buddy. Join me as we navigate our way through your favorite destinations, making sure, of course, to hashtag go safe, go travel. And on today's episode, um, simula natin with this reminder na the only impossible journey is the reason is the one you never begin. Again, the only impossible journey is the one you never begin. That's from Tony Robbins. And for today's episode, we're jet setting to greater heights, you know, creating new and memorable journeys this November. Tuloy lang ang Agustang buhay, guys. At saan pa man tayo mapadpad, 
will always make sure na to make the most out of it, diba? Baka maiyak ako dito. <laughs> anyway, this also goes out to the displaced tourism industry workers who keep on moving forward and striving to make their dreams a reality. Again, that's the essence of GPS TV. This is for the tourism industry. Para sa mga Pilipino na nasa tourism industry, para po ito sa inyong lahat. Patuloy pa rin ang ating pag-bounce back Diba? Sa bansa natin. Kaya sana ay patuloy nyo pa rin pong suportahan ng aming programa. Today, we'll talk about art. Yan. Art, going digital, and virtual tours. A huge part of one's culture is reflected in its art forms. May it be in live art, um, sculptures, and even paintings. Diba? And now, we get to view these wonderful art and online exhibits. Yan. So, hindi lang natin i-discuss yung art, but also the new normal in, in appreciating art. Oh, diba? To make the viewing experience even more interesting, there are now live virtual tours in the Philippines and even abroad. So, where the virtual guide and the tourist could interact in a unique manner. Malalaman natin kung ano nga ba yung unique manner na yan. So, yung pag-online uh, interaction, hindi na lang yan sa mga group chat and group videos, pati na rin in art exhibit, di ba? Today, we have invited some special guests to shed light, shed some more light on our topic for today. And I would like to call on our first guest. He is no other than Mr. Pancho Piano. He is an artist and exhibitor, a multifaceted, award-winning master visual artist, respected for creating artworks through distinctive paintings, impressive wood carvings, prolific clay sculpture, and liturgical stained glass art designs. Magandang hapon po, Sir Pancho. Hello, mabuhay po, Sir Pancho. Okay, uh, just marhay na hapon, magandang hapon, good afternoon sa <laughs> Maayong hapon po, Sir Pancho. And now our next guest, she is Miss Ana Karina Hardin. She's a Filipina. Uh, she's a Filipina entrepreneur and visual artist, champion in capacity building through arts. And she has grown as an artist for the community, seeing art and creativity as an efficient way of transforming the next generation. She also founded Artisticong Kabatang Philippines Incorporated, a nonprofit organization in 2011 and later Art Dialogo Asia in 2017. Hello, Miss Karina! Hi! Magandang hapon sa inyong lahat dyan. Mm, Mayang hapon po. Yes, it's very sunny here in Kuala Lumpur. Yes. Oh, <laughs> we are now seeing your artwork behind you. Oh, yes. but very beautiful. Yeah, That's one of my works. Mm, okay, later on, we're going to talk about them more. Now, yeah. our next guest is Miss Honey. Bagridaze, she is from the World Federation of Tourist Guide Association International Trainer. Hello, Miss Hani. Kamusta, everyone? Kamusta? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice and later, to meet you from Hungan. Wow, and later we should uh, also learn words, a couple of words from your language dahil you know what kamusta is. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Last but not the least, we have Miss PG Guba. She, she is from Cebu Guides Association who is also part of V Guides Philippines. Mabuhay! I am PG, a Filipina, a tour guide, a storyteller. Maayong hapon kaninyong tanan. Good afternoon, everybody. Magandang hapon po and thank you for being here. Nakaka-proud po kayong lahat na narinito. And it's 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 an exciting episode, guys. So, happy lang kayo mamaya nyo na itanong yung mga gusto nyo itanong. But for now, mabuhay and welcome to GPS TV's Journey. So now, tune in to GPS TV on Facebook and YouTube to learn more about tips for worry-free travels and unique journeys. To boot, diba? Art uh, uniquely captures societal changes and the same way that it impacts the development of societies 
and how these societies perceive art. Uh, if, if, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Now, uh, before I, I begin my my questions, which I am, I have a lot of list here that I wanted to ask you guys. Uh, let's start first with uh, with how you started. Uh, how did you start with with your passion for art? Let's start with Sigura Miss Karina. Well, actually, uh, my art has become a combination of all my inspiration. Like, Sir Pancho is also here. is one of my mentors, by the way. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like being born in the Philippines, uh, you have this access to world-class talents, mga artists, and dami sa atin. And then from there, you grow this inspiration. So I became more like an eclectic artist. I think that would be the term, like contemporary, then the eclectic. So you mix like different uh, styles and then learnings from different artists that you've met along your way. Like for me, I do love the um, Spanish influence. And then of course the Filipino, like Picasso. And then I also, of course, like in Philippines, I also love Malang, Cubism. I love Cubism so much. And then you keep on growing. And then like Sir Pancho has his very unique style as well that you can incorporate like the colors you would know like for us artists you would know them by the elements that we put into our art later on we will um ko nang gustong itanong with, with just what you said but now let's hear from your mentor sir pancho uh, <laughs> sir pancho paano po kayo nagsimula sa inyong passion sa art ah uh, okay sa akin naman uh, nagsimula ko doon sa aming lugar na malapit sa Pacific Ocean. Ano po yung so, uh, That's a uh, north coastal of Lagunoy. It's a uh, Mangugon, uh, Mangugon facing Pacific Ocean. So ang mm -hmm. canvas ko noon is the uh, fisher's boat, yung fisher fisherman's boat. Wow. Uh, dahil uh, nagpapagawa sila ng mga uh, drawings with uh, different creatures and sea creatures. So, yun ang aking inspiration. So, sila-sila mismong fisherman, nag, nagkaroon sila ng mga parang contest kung sino ang magandang la, pagkakalabasan ng aking dibuho. So, for me, I share that. I inspired din ako. Kasi sila mismo from, kumbaga, doon sa pinaka uh, barrio na, na, na nabigyan ko sila ng uh, simula sa art. So that that ano uh, that inspired me and then dahil I came from the rural area remote area that's very remote yeah at, Mangugoy at, po sa Mangugoy. At, at this moment binagyo Yan. We are very so, sorry to hear that so went to Naga City to have another ano uh, uh, so nagiba na yung aking canvas so I have now my uh, canvas mismo painting. So from Naga, I went to Manila. And then ito na, ang aking more on painting is more on figurative abstraction. But I started in realism and also uh, uh, impressionism. Wow. So evolve, nag evolve siya mm -hmm. sa pagta-travel ko. Wow! So, dahil yeah. sa travel ko, isa na yon yung project namin nila, Karina, sa Malaysia, yung Art Dialogue. So, we share uh, with Malaysian artists and Filipino artists by uh, Miss Karina, siyang nag-sponsor. So, yan ang um, contribution. So, from now on, uh, devoted ako sa aking art as Figurative abstraction. Figurative but, abstraction. As, Mamaya, mas tatanungin ko pa po kayo kung ano yung figurative abstraction. Yeah. <laughs> Aside from that, I have also different mediums. Mm -hmm. uh, I installed many uh, ecclesiastical yeah. uh, objects, stained glass, like that. Uh, yeah. Stained glass from our... our uh, churches in Bicol and Manila and outside the Philippines. So, uh, medyo, ano, medyo may pagka uh, dalawang mediums ang ginagawa ko. 
Wow, yeah. amazing. And yeah. before we started to our viewers, before we started, Sir Pancho mentioned na uh, ilan sa kanyang, uh, sadly, and nakadurog ng puso para sa akin, uh, a lot of his works were uh, affected by the typhoon. They were washed away. Yeah. So we're very sorry to hear that, Sir Pancho. Pero sama-sama po tayong babangon. And definitely, yes. we will support your future yeah. exhibits. Thank yes. you, thank you. Uh, yeah. Miss PG. Uh, what role does art play in your life, like as a as a virtual guy? Okay, so everybody loves beauty, right? So any time that somebody would ask me, "Do you do art?" So I would answer, "Ah, uh, I'm sure I'm an artist at my <laughs> own right." But beauty is really something that people. Uh, would really take time to travel because they want to see beauty. So it could be in the nature, in the beautiful buildings that they can see, yeah. in the structure, so you know, in the plants. So I guess uh, even though you cannot really paint like Miss Karina and Sir Pancho, I mean, there's really art in your heart. Sabi nga nila, di ba? There's, ano ba yun? Uh, Pag walang art, wala ding heart. Kasi di ba, nasa gitna siya ng heart. So, yes. yon. And also, in addition to what you said, I just realized, nasa kanya-kanyang definition niya ng beauty, which later on, we will further identify. How about you, Miss Honey? Uh, what role did art or does art play in your life as a virtual guide? You know, I, I agree with PG that everyone is following beauty and art. And of course, I know my job as a kind of art, art of interaction, interaction with people, making communication with people and showing them the beauties. This beauty can be in a beautiful, just time working. I, I'd like to ask if as a virtual tour guide, how important is it that uh, virtual visuals or art um, how does how do they help you in getting your message across? Of course, it helps a lot because when people see something, they can feel what uh, we mean to tell them. If it's like when you read something without any photo, the percentage that you understand from it, of course, is less than when that text has some photos. And then by seeing the art, you can feel, you can really feel everyone has his or her own perspective from visual art. For example, when we look at the art, beautiful arts of Miss Karina or Sir Pancho, of course, everyone has his or her own impression out of it. And that is what made art really unique. Mm. and personal of course I super agree with the part that you said it is personal and unique like how my when I first asked Miss Karina and Sir Pancho of, of how they started it all started with their personal experiences and which is very unique that you will you can never copy or you can never duplicate now I'd like to go back to what you've mentioned Miss Karina about how you describe your art, the evolution. So can you describe to us, um, how can you describe today's contemporary art? Well, actually in Southeast Asia, uh, Filipinos are known for contemporary art because of our influence. Like it all started when the Spanish came, um, when the Spanish regime, you know, um, started in the Philippines and then they started teaching us their ways. Kumbaga, Pinasa nila yung kanilang alam sa art. And then, as a matter of fact, you can see it all around sa churches and then this practices. That's why we have diversified art. And then we know how to create like faces and figures. So from there, let's, that's why before you can abstract, this is one thing I, I know as an artist as well. Uh, and if you want to take it seriously, you cannot abstract anything without knowing the uh, fundamentals of art. Very mm -hmm. important, yeah. And so also, it's a tip for uh, budding artists as well that you get to know your fundamentals. And so master you, the rules before you break the rules. Yes, something like that. And meron pang sa contemporary art like now, we're more open and because of 
like this accessibility, mobility, like we can go places, we can, you know, we can tap into different circles and then we get to learn more and more. So with this, uh, learning is a form of mobility. And from that, we're able to diversify form of arts and incorporate it into our, you know, pieces of arts. Yeah, so yun lang. it always evolves. And for me, I think you should not um, just stick to what you know as an artist. You keep on experimenting. Keep on mm -hmm. experimenting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But never forget your um, identity at the end of the day. That's so nice. Very beautiful. How about you, Sir Pancho? Para po sa inyo, how will you describe today's contemporary art? Uh, yes. Uh, today's con contemporary art, uh, parang very white very white uh, actually yung mga lalo na yung mga young artists now mga filipino young artists they are practicing mostly contemporary art yeah. so but for us uh, medyo nag-adjust din kami so tama yun sabi ni Karina nag-evolve and then experiment uh, that's why uh, hindi ka lang nandoon sa isang object or isang subject uh, Pana tuloy tuloy ang experiment and uh, sa, sa ngayon talagang grabe ang demand for contemporary art yeah. as Karina said yes wow. but you mentioned history like, uh, Miss Karina mentioned history but do you mean that uh, Philippines or the Filipino people have an existing form of art before and then yeah. when the Spanish arrived um, yeah. was it in a way it was it changed or was it more of a fusion of both? Like, uh, uh, maybe see, Sir, okay. Sir, Sir Pancho, you can go ahead. Yes, yeah. yes. There's a lot of influence from spa, from foreign foreign, uh, foreign artists, yeah. And then, we, ano, kumbaga, inaano natin, dinidevelop na lang din para maging, uh, parang may identity as Filipino. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's always like from the patterns that you can see being incorporated into the artworks today, like all these patterns from Mindanao, from Visayas, from different tribes, those are things part of our heritage. Mm -hmm. So the artworks that we create are form, form of our heritage too, and history. And yun nga, sabi rin ni Sir Punch, it's it has diversified yung art forms like in the contemporary world of art. But one thing for sure, it has become more inclusive. So everyone is included. Yeah, everyone is included. Anything for yes. day. Yes. It's not something like, oh, itong particular pattern na to, dito lang to. O kaya ito, uh, foreign lang to, yung ganun. So yeah. it's, that's so it beautiful. Yes. It's very uh, unifying. And yeah. it's also very empowering. Thank you. How about you, uh, Miss PG? Um, para sa inyo, ano po yung role ng arts in promoting tourism of a place? Okay, so I don't do art, like, like art, art. But I have two nephews, and one of my nephew uh, really loves drawing. So when he was still small, he really loves to draw. So I don't know if I can share a screen, but there's a postcard that he made uh, when he was five years old. Now he's 12. When he was five, because I'm a tour guide, I make sure that I also bring them to the places here in Cebu, right? Because, I mean, I can travel, we can go out of Cebu, but it would be weird if they don't know our place. Yeah. So when I would bring them, and then when we went home, I asked him, okay, can you draw to me who's your hero? So like that, because we went in a historical tour. So he uh, he drew it on a paper, and then I was so shocked when I saw it, because he drew two figures, okay? So in, in a child's way. So one figure is actually Lapu-Lapu. Because I'm from Cebu. He drew Lapu-Lapu. So you'll really know he's Lapu-Lapu because he has the putong. You know, uh, they have the putong, the warrior, the red putong. So he has that. And he also have the sword. So I know that he's Lapu-Lapu because we went to Mactan Liberty Shrine. Mm -hmm. And then the other figure is Jose Rizal. You know why I knew it's Jose Rizal? Because why? the hair. Yes, Tapos ang dala niya, ano, yung, yung pangsulat. Uh, yung pangsulat uh, pluma. Oh, yun, yung pluma. Yun yung dala niya. Tapos pinagtabi niya. 
So, alam nyo ba kung ano yung mag- nagpa-shock sa akin? They have knee pads. And you know yung pads dito, kung nagbabike ka, may ganyan. Oh. Sabi pa niya, uh, Ate PJ, would you want me to add umbrella? Because they're just there, standing, baka umulan. <laughs> diba? Baka umulan, payungan natin ko, no need, no need, they're strong, remember? So, bakit may knee pads? I asked. So, so sabi niya, because they fight, they need to protect themselves when they fight. So, imagine it's in one postcard because I really printed it and made it in a postcard. So I, and then makikita mo yung difference uh, lapu-lapu with his sword, di ba? Hmm. And then Rizal fighting with the pluma. So yung parang this art is so simple but it really brings the message across to hmm. all generation that I guide. So there would be times that I would really bring the postcard and I give hmm. it as a souvenir for them so that they will remember the heroes that we have in the country. So kahit walang explanation yung drawing, pag nakita mo yung parang, wow, these are our heroes. Uh, people who really fought and stood up for us in the eyes of a five-year-old. And I think no words needed because the art itself speaks for itself. I'm actually having goosebumps right now. <laughs> and five-year-old having that drawing. And to me, it, it just really emphasizes how Uh, that simple art uh, tells the whole story or tells uh, the pride of the place. Thank you, Miss PG. And ano po yung name ng inyong pamangkin na napaka-cute naman? <laughs> so, I gave him a nickname, Laminin. So, if Laminin. you're wondering what Laminin is, it's a cell adhesion, cell adhesion molecule. It keeps the, you know, the cells together. So, I call oh, him Laminin. cute! Yeah. Oh. So, Laminin, shout out to you if you are watching. <laughs> Very good. And we we are, ako, I'd like to see more of your art soon. You know, here on GPS TV, it's good that we get to hear from different perspectives in one episode. Like we hear from artists, we hear from virtual tour guides promoting uh, a place using art. And it's very, I don't know, me, I'm just really learning a lot and I'm having these bumps right now with the things that I that are coming inside my brain. Uh, now, Miss Honey, I'd like to ask you, um, from your own experience, uh, what is the role of arts in promoting the tourism of a place? Of course, it has a really big position and big place in guiding the tours especially in my country, because our life is integrated with art, especially painting and poetry, as I believe that poetry is a kind of art too, uh, through the history, because sometimes the situation of the country was in a way that people couldn't speak straight, Mm. so they started to paint what they wanted to say and sometimes we have mix of different arts in my country for example we have a style of painting called miniature this kind of painting is mixture of persian painting mongolian painting and arab Mm. art so throughout the history it make a big role in our culture and as a tourist guide we have to show them because it is really, uh, I can say, realistic feeling, realistic idea mm. about culture and even history to our mm. visitors. True, and it can only be shown through art. Right? Now, uh, to our audiences, um, you might be wondering why we invited Ms. Fanny because she had her uh, Pinoy audiences. Miss Honey, I'm very curious. How was your live virtual tour with the Pinoy audience? And when was this? It was great. It was a few weeks ago. And of course, it was my first experience for virtual tour for Philippines. Because Uh before that, all my tourists were anyone and we were face to face. But virtual tour for Filipinos was Really great experience. Were they talkative? Were they talkative? Were they talkative? No, because in virtual tour, everyone is muted. (laughs) 
good thing because if it wasn't muted, for sure the Pinoys are very talkative and they would have a lot of questions. Now, Miss Honey, what do you think are the similarities oh, of Filipino culture yeah, and you know, Iran? Uh-huh. Yeah, you know, something which was very interesting for me was we have many similarities. Oh. Iranians are talkative too, so <laughs> there's no <laughs> problem with that. <laughs> but another thing that I found out in these years about Filipinos is that they are very similar to Iranians, that they want to know more about routine life and everyday life rather than just knowing the facts and figures that they can find on internet or books, but they want to feel the life. And also they love eating. And <laughs> because in Iran, we really like fruits, different fruits and this diversity in foods. And, and my virtual tour, one of the parts that people liked a lot was when I talked about fruits and especially rice. Wow, oh, that's interesting. Anyway, wait, may I ask, when was your last live virtual tour with Pinoy audiences? Um, I think it was three weeks ago. Wow, just very recent. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. and I heard you knew the word kamusta. Uh, can you teach us um, yeah. a word or a two uh, from Iran? Uh, if I want to tell it, I prefer to tell the word that we use for saying thank you. Oh, what? Because it has root in our culture too. The Persian word for saying thank you is sepas. 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 Se means tree. Se. And pas means virtue. Pas. Oh. 2,500 years ago, when in Persia, people were Zoroastrians, they had a saying by their prophet that you should think good, you should say good, and you should do good. These mm -hmm. are three virtues. So when we want to say thank you to someone, we say sepas means that you have these three virtues. Mm, beautiful. Sepas. Ah, I hope I'm saying it right. Thank you. Yeah, thank, yeah, you. <laughs> thank you, Miss Honey. Really awesome learning um, words here huh? on GPS TV. I didn't expect. So for now, um. Baka info overload na rin yung viewers natin. This is just the tip of the iceberg. And I'm sure our guests will have a lot to share about arts and digital tourism. Don't go anywhere because GPS TV journeys will be right back.
you are still with me, welcome back to GPS TV. I am Aya Fernandez, your online travel buddy. So let's continue the conversation with the creative people we have on board. Uh, let's start with the artists. Um, Miss Karina, how can arts and tourism work together? Like, um, how can arts and tourism work together to spur economic development, most especially right now? Wow. Well, actually, yes, it has always been intertwined together because whenever you go on traveling, it's the form of arts that you get to see. Like the churches are form of arts, architecture, everything. It's intertwined. It's just sadly at the moment we cannot go on, you know, visit these places or go to museums and, you know, and be amazed with how beautiful these artworks are uh, physically. Or at least me social distancing, right? <laughs> yes. However, yeah, I know social distancing. However, now we're becoming more, um, we're using art beyond its aesthetic purpose. So, parang nag evolve lang because of the pandemic. So, I'm looking at it on the brighter side. Yeah, the pandemic has only helped us um, take a look at art or use it beyond, you know, um, just for the aesthetics that it has. So I think Miss uh, Miss PG can you know can also share a little bit something uh, on this um, and because yes. it's becoming how I say it's becoming more and more popular that we have these virtual tours but on the other side of virtu virtual tours of course they always say it's still you know it's still not the same mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know it's still not the same and maybe one day we can have that but again, art has been, you know, being used on a different uh, stream now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So more and more creative, um, creative thinkers are needed, perhaps in to to market to it more stay, yeah, for mm -hmm. education to to make like uh, what they call this to make like more books to make like all this informative yes. or responsibly creative content online mm -hmm. and also let's just not limit art for like visual arts lang ha. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, cool. This is one thing I say, like, uh, like now, also, this is a problem. Huh? There's an underlying problem that they always see art as just like with lang, or it's only, yes, art, you know, it's only art lang. Okay, that's a term that we use, honey, in here, like, uh, art lang yan, or what. But then when you look around, everything is made, um, or created according to the fundamentals of art. So, we um, really need it. Yeah, right. I'm Ms. very, I'm very glad you pointed that out in this discussion. Yeah. Um, during the pandemic, when we were all in quarantine, um, there I believe, well, based from my experience for, with my friends, there was a huge demand on uh, art, like let's say to keep people sane, to voice out opinions, to uh, to cope with what is happening, and also for businesses, for uh, logos, for um, the uh, mga ganon. Marami. And then this pandemic, um, it I love how it emphasized um, that we have to pay our artists rightfully. Exactly. We have to pay our arts our artists rightfully with the term rightfully because back in, well it's twenty twenty but sadly there are still people who are backwards mag isep like uh yun nga nila lang ang art which is not yeah. true yeah they haven't thought of it like as a lucrative uh, job or you know um, a path that you can go through especially in the philippines they always say lang however we're known to be creatives that's our trademark around the world like sir pancho is also a living example that art is a lucrative uh, profession yeah economically speaking however you need to be resilient Yes. And that's one thing art is also teaching us, resilience. At the end of the day, we're, we're, moving, we're moving forward in making a sturdy foundation for our creative economy. So, kaya, I think also this show, maybe, you know, it's one of the mechanisms of churning uh, or, you know, churning the butter. Sorry, I'm using some words like that. Um, sa Tagalog, para mas maging, ano pa, para mas madevelop yung ating industriya. Mm -hmm. and salamat Ms. Karina. That's um, I know I, I I really believe that the impact is different if it comes directly from an artist like you, than right. from someone yeah. who is just an who someone appreciates art. It's different when it comes from an artist like you. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Like like for us now, artists like 
or other people who would like to become artists maybe one day, practice, practice, or create before you get so inspired. So you, you can meet halfway, like the expectation and then what you really wanted. Yeah, mm. inspiration and then your reality, something like that. And yun lang, like for us artists, we can never sell something we don't know. And our art, we know it by our hearts. And we can sell it properly, in a way. Kaya wag lang nila lang ang arts. <laughs> yes, true. Nako, sa mga viewers natin ngayon, klaro na tayo dyan na. <laughs> anyway, how about you, Miss Fiji, coming from a perspective as a tour guide or a virtual tour guide? How can arts and tourism work together to spur the economic development right now? Okay, so as for me, so I've been doing virtual tours since June. So I launched it in June. So my last job was March 7. So no time to be stressed and no time to prepare. I just lose my job on March 7 because no tourists, right? Mm -hmm. So from March to May, that was the time like, I'm like in a quarantine university. I watch all webinars. May it be to education, to resem, even online art class. So mm -hmm. I joined online art class by Robert Alejandro of Papel Marotti. So mm -hmm. every 10 a.m., we would log on it with my two nephews and we would draw. Wow. That kept, kept us sane during that time. So imagine from March to May, I was just learning and learning and learning everything. So everything until finally, I've got the guts to really do it. So from June, I started my first virtual tour. So one of the first virtual tours that I have, I call it Roots and Wings. Because that's the two things uh, that are important that we give our children. Root, roots to know where they come from and wings so that they know that they can fly, right? Yeah. So during that tour, because it was for kids, so it was for kids 4 to 10 years old. So I created that tour for them, 4 to 10 years old. So how can you do it that they will do something? Because, you know, kids, you keep them in one hour, they will run in front of you. And, you know, the computer in their front. So what I did, because art is not just drawing and painting, right? So because I do origami, I did wow. paper origami. So I made them make paper planes and we flew it while doing the tour. So I guess in that way, you know, incorporating, you know, art that can be done in the time that you are doing virtual tours is really, really good, especially if your audience are kids. So, so many times I make them draw. So while on tour, so it was very fun and it made them stay on their seat. Uh, unlike if they will just listen to you, but yeah. if you make them busy while you're doing the virtual tour, mm -hmm. uh, it's really, really good. They will stay with you and they will really, teacher, teacher, how oh, <laughs> And teacher, teacher. Aww. And you know what's so fun when, when everybody has really did it like together. So it brings them uh, together, united. Like even though we're just in our home, it feels like we're doing the art together and it feels like we are in one place. Wow. And with what you, you just said, it's like art makes the ordinary extraordinary. No? Because uh, like with the origami. Um, you were already coping with the new normal. It was something, for me, challenging because it's something new. But you may, art was able to keep it light, to keep it, to keep you holding on. Thank you for sharing your thoughts. Sir Pancho, ha, from your own experience, na napakarami, hindi ko yeah. ma-emphasize. Uh, so tingin niyo po, paano po mag-work hand in hand or magtutulungan ng arts at ang turismo para bumangon po ulit ang ating ekonomiya. Yes. Uh, example lang. Ang example lang sa Naga, Pina Francia. Example is uh, when we celebrate Pina Francia, so uh, we have a group na nag-exhibit for that event. Okay. Uh, so we contribute uh, para sa tourism. Uh, we promote Bicol uh, culture and traditions. So by by the visual arts, uh, so yun ang ginagawa namin. So parang nakakaroon din ng uh, 
income yung mga artist at the same time yung mga devotee pag nagpunta doon. So, uh, vice versa, uh, promoting tourism and uh, additional income for the uh, for the arts. So, yun ang sinishare namin. Opo. Oh, and art murals are, ano eh, are staple in these said events that you just mentioned. What was your experience like before as an artist and when these events were held? Uh, marami akong experience na, na by doing uh, some mural painting. Uh, doing historical paintings and doing some religious paintings. So, uh, it attracts uh, many uh, ordinary people na through the through visuals, nagkaroon ng parang idea na hindi, hindi mo na dapat i-sabi, gaya ng kwento ni Miss ano, mm. from Cebu, yung ginawa ng bata, na through visuals, yung representation of culture and the arts, uh, nagkaroon ng ano sa turismo. So, yun. Yeah. Yeah, yes, Miss Karina, anything to add? I'd like to add on that. Like, um, before, uh, it's a means of collaborate. For me, because I do a lot of collaborative murals. Sir Pancho and I, we also do murals. Um, however, it's always nice to celebrate this sense of achievement, just like Savinimi's speech, like when the nephew is showing, like, the work of art. And, you know, there's this sense of appreciation. And I know, like, murals has become, like, uh, important, very essential, like, to bring in community. Yeah, just like what Sir Pancho wanted to also say. And besides, like, the, again, beyond its, its aesthetics, like, um, like for us, like, we've been installing mural overseas. It's a mm. way for us to share our heritage as Filipinos. Alam niyo yon? I know, like, when, when you look at me, like, I'm always in my dresses and all that, but trust me, when we do art, we really <laughs> forget rugged and start <laughs> doing our mural. But oh. it's one way, yeah, it's one way or another that we're able to share that we're, we're world class. Yeah, as Filipinos, creative people. Yeah. And also we are world class because of our own story, because our of not only because of our talents, but because of our narrative that no one else in the world has. Diba? Yeah. Our story of resilience, our story of how we were oppressed, continuously oppressed, and how we continuously get back up. Um, we have common pain with other countries for sure. With sure. Uh, with Miss Honey here right now nodding, I see you with Iranians. But, um, you know, it becomes unique because of what really happens. Sure. And thank you for sharing those with us, Miss Karina and Sir Pancha. Now, um, many from the tourism workforce have lost their jobs because of the ongoing pandemic. And yeah. it is good news that the Department of Tourism and Dole has recently released a memorandum stating that they will be giving cash assistance and cash for work program for tourism workers, particularly tour guides, who were displaced due to the pandemic. Diba? Ang ganda ng ngiti nating lahat dito, most especially sila, Miss Peach. Now, how did virtual tour guiding turn your life around? Let's start with uh, Miss Honey first. How did virtual tour guiding turn your life around? Mm. You know, by coming the coronavirus for a long time, uh, we had to just stay at home. And especially in my country, people didn't accept virtual tours very easily. So what I did through about four or five months was just a studying, a studying going in depth with just uh, different elements mm -hmm. in tourism and how we can change it to virtual tourism. I started to search, to attend in many webinars about virtual tours because I wanted to do it in the right way if I want to do it. Uh, I found some friends who did it in their own country and I started to use their experiences. And then what I did was because, as you said, all of us have our own stories. 
And one of the things that most of my friends know me by is that I always have my own stories. Mm -hmm. I always change everything in my own way. So uh, I believe that as a tourist guide, I am ambassador of my country to represent the culture and art. Mm, I can say an example that, for example, our handicrafts. So I have to represent them and interpret it. It's not just showing a handicraft to my tourists and say, okay, this is a, one of our handicrafts and that's it. I started to interpret the arts which we use in our especially handicrafts. For example, tell them how we make a vase uh, which is just painting on a copper, why we use copper, why we don't do it on clay, when we started to do it and so on. And I found it so interesting for my tourists because, you know, besides being a tourist guide, I have some webinars about rule of, uh, um, role of tourist guides in the world oh, okay. these days. You know, one of the biggest difference between us and Google Map or Wikipedia or <laughs> these things is that we have this ability to interpret. Yes. You know, we don't sell information, but we give them interesting information. We should just inform them in a way that they can feel, especially in these days that they cannot touch, they cannot go face to face with things. I think our part is more difficult now because by using just photos, by using words, we should make a picture by words. You know, when they are taking a look at a painting, now they have just one picture. So this is our job to make this relationship when they cannot touch it or go close to it. So yes. I think it turned our life, but to be optimistic in a good way. But anyway, I hope that it will be end soon so I can see my tourist face to face. Oh, but uh, you know what? It's beautiful on what you said, because uh, when we see art, we have our personal thoughts. but now you emphasize further that you are a tour guide you guide the audience on how to uh look at it you know uh, you make the message more meaningful and so thank you so much for what you are doing right now and it's amazing how even if uh you're not here from the philippines but it feels like it feels like I don't know. It feels like we've been friends. <laughs> wow. <laughs> or baka FC lang ako. Feeling close. <laughs> Charat. But you know what? Thank you, Miss Honey. And for sure, I now get why the Pinoy audience love you so much. <laughs> because you're very you. sweet. Uh, how about you, Miss Peach? Um, paano po nabago ng virtual tour guiding ang inyong buhay? Wow, grabe talaga na bago ang aking buhay. Super na bago. <laughs> Super na bago. I mean, I'm a people person. So actually, I graduated as an industrial engineer. But in my journey through life, I found my passion, which is tour guiding. One, I love people. Two, I love talking. Three, I love traveling. So I love the outdoors and all that, which some of those things that I love, I cannot do, especially the traveling, right? I yeah. cannot do that. But uh, as I've told you, I've been studying in the quarantine university from March to uh, May. Oh. So one of the things that I studied is I studied is actually digital art. So because I don't know to how to, but I can use my cell phone, right? So I would use. I studied Canva. Ponto, PixArt, Snapchat, and you know how I use this digital art? I am the one who make my own uh, advertisement of the virtual tour that I am making. 
So that's how uh, art has helped me, number one. So number two, because I love talking, this is really the time that I can reach out to friends. When I launched my tour, I did it for free. So that was June 11, 2020. Because I am not sure, you know, this is the first time that I will do it. So I don't know if people will like to listen to me, would like to take that time of their life, like for one hour to listen to me. So I tried it with my friends. So I posted a poster, an ad, and you know, I, about 25 of my friends joined me on June 11 for the launching so that I'll know that Yes, people really need it. And you know what made my heart so glad is that after the tour, because I allow them to unmute their mics, mm -hmm. it's as if, you know, it's a time they can reach out to one another and talk with one another, even though virtually. Okay, so June 12, I started, you know, posting with pay. So I started that, you know, I did marketing. So I did not put the price first because I want them to reach out to me. And then that's the time I will tell them, okay, this is the <laughs> amount for the virtual tour. So I really don't know. It's all experiment. I don't know how to do it. No background. I was fearful, but if I would stay fearful, then I wouldn't know if this will work. So wow. as of the moment, I already did nine products of wow. tours. Wow. Okay, the first one, that's the Independence Day Tour. I did it for six times with different audiences. Youth group from Dumaguete, from Bacolod, from Cebu, from Butuan in Mindanao. I've reached Mindanao. Wow. I've reached uh, Bohol with the land bank, you know, a bank. Because they need, you know, something that they can, you know, uh, aside from going to the bank every day with all the protocols. So, you know, they were so surprised because I allowed them to sing the national anthem and they just miss it because no mm -hmm. flag ceremony anymore. Yes. You know, the social distancing and all. So I did that. And then I have on Friendship and More to celebrate the Philippine American Friendship Day. So in mm -hmm. fact, I have invited a tour guide from Texas, a Filipino who's in Texas, so that she can also say what's happening in America. So it's like an update of what's happening in the Philippines mm -hmm. and what's happening in the United States. Yes. And then I did Leon Kilat tour. So Leon Kilat is a local hero here in Cebu. Okay. So I did it for three times. And then of course, I did Beyond Chocolate. So I guess this mm -hmm. is also a, a form of art. So this one, I'm very happy because uh, the Chocolate Chamber is a company. So imagine the tourist company or the restaurants and cafes are all closed during the pandemic. So imagine when, when the owner called me, I was so happy because I was always telling her, you know, I am doing virtual tour. If you are ready, we can collaborate and do it. And right now, we already did six runs. Two wow. runs with brownies. And really thought how to make brownies. Mm -hmm. And then next, cookies. And then the third one is how to plant, how to grow cacao. So I think in some form or another, it's like a form of art that cooking is a form of art, right? And then you do it together. You, you, you take down the recipe and all. And what's more, because of the yes, this Beyond Chocolate virtual tour that I have, we were able to reach out to frontliners. So as of the moment, we have given those brownies and chocolate cookies, the cookies, uh, to five hospitals here in Cebu. So yeah. after the tour, we would ask our tourists, oh, would you want us to lala move this to you? Or would you want us to wow. give it to the frontliners and the hospitals? And we are so glad that they will choose to give it to the frontliners and when the oh. frontliners when they you know, accept it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so when the, the frontliners accept it, you can just see the smile on their face. Like of course the the mass is important, the shield is important. But if it's something beyond that, like an artisanal artisanal product made by the chocolate queen. So, you know, it gives you appreciation. And I can really see because they will send their photo, the big smiles beneath the, the mask because their eyes were twinkling so that one and then in august we have buwan ng wika so i did buwan ng wika for a school for college students and i did it for the police in the prison so can you imagine uh the police in the prison 
they are not prisoners. But during that time, some of them uh, really felt they are in prison because they get to stay there. Because, you know, you cannot just go out and go in because you might be bringing the virus. Yeah. So it was a moment that we can, you know, to, to relax and hear about history, about places. And then I did, of course, I told you about Roots and Wings. I did mm -hmm. Cinco de Noviembre, which will be uh, so near. So it it is about the Plug yun na po yan. Kailan po yan? <laughs> Ay, hindi. Yung next tour ko, November 7, Beyond Chocolate virtual okay. tour and then because i've been doing virtual tours indonesia actually reached out to me so we did a collaboration between cebu and indonesia so our guests were indonesians paying so that they can see what they can see in cebu wow then, uh, it was my birthday last october 31 so happy birthday po <laughs> thank you so i've i mean I'm I'm not earning as much when I was during the uh, yeah during that time before the pandemic. But you know I can say that I'm so blessed, and because I'm so blessed, last October 31, I gave a free tour. Ooh. So I called it tour or treat virtual tour. <laughs> so you get the tour and then you are treat. So there's also a treat because it's free, yes. and then you also get to connect with your friends that you have not seen for a while. So it was quite fun. So it's like everyone misses everybody. So when I asked them to unmute, so, mm -hmm. so during that time, I was able to bring them to Russia and Colombia because I was able to study there. So we talked about different celebrations like Halloween, Dia de los Muertos. So how you can open your mind that though you have a celebration, other countries might not have it. So mm -hmm. the thing is you have to understand each other. Yes. So again, to summarize everything that I've said, which is quite long already. So <laughs> virtual tour really helped me a lot, one, in my storytelling, because I cannot help it. I really want to talk. Mm. So I, I, were, I was able to reach out people who's so hungry with history, with a different culture, with a beautiful place, with a lesson that they could get, and to collaborate with a tourism industry as well as well as to reach out to our frontliner so yeah. it has really helped me a lot including yeah. learning digital art so and thank you Miss, virtual Miss course Peach, <laughs> Miss PG yes, alam yes. niya po uh, gusto ko rin sabihin na bukod sa sinabi niyo you are blessed we are also blessed by your talent by your passion in tour guiding because uh, as much as we really emphasize that we value the actual you know First, yung talagang even an exhibit. I, yes. I feel like everyone will agree to me na iba pa rin yung actual talaga. Natitignan mo yung mm -hmm. painting. Pero wala eh. We have to innovate. We have to adapt to the new normal. And thank you for sound or for making it beautiful. For sound, for uh, touring us to a day in the life of a virtual tour guide like you and Miss Honey. So thank you. Thank you po sa inyong kwento. And um, mas na-appreciate, per ako personally, mas naging na-humanize sa akin yung kung paano nga ba yung ginagawa nyo. And definitely, we will support your future tours, di ba? Now, um, I'd like to, moving to the last question, um, gusto ko pong itanong sa inyo uh, as, as artists, what is the role of social media in promoting online exhibits and tours? Go to Ms. Karina, let's, let's start with you. Well, I haven't done like any art tour per se, but we did had an art contest. And at the moment, art has become very important, like I say, again and again, because it, um, like now we're at the dark, you know, dark times. We're at the dark time, so we need something to hold on to, and art has the ability. And it taught us to be more, um, you know, become more as empaths. Yes. Yeah, so we became more empaths. And then what we focus on, like for, for us in Art Dialogo, like what we're doing with Together with Sir Pancho as well, that we came up with a cross-cultural um, art exhibition in a way, but then through a video. So to also say thank you to, to the frontliners across seven countries. Yeah, that's around Asia. So we have Korea, Philippines, Malaysia, Kazakhstan. Um, 
Lebanon, Lebanon, um, Afghanistan, and of course, Malaysia. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And we're able to collect like 280 artworks. So what we wanted to do is to use art to uplift the morale of children, you know, children and youth yeah. through art, like we can do this. And we also came up with art tutorials that also introduces our heritage as Filipinos. And then later on, it's being used by, um, by some educators back in the Philippines because the content is according to the Department of Education's uh-huh. art curriculum. And then now we're going to launch an ASEAN art room. Wow. Yes. So we're please, featuring- please kindly tell us about yeah. it. Yes. So this is a project that we're doing with the ASEAN Committee in Madrid, Spain. When okay. all when when all of this began, actually, I was in Spain. <laughs> yeah, I, like yeah, during, during March. Hello. Yes, oh, they no. announced the pandemic and all that. But I'm, I'm, not back. I'm still lucky that I'm able to get the flight just like right on time to be back here in the no region. March. Yes, March. Oh, thank God. Okay, anyway, go, go, going back. <laughs> yeah. but, but it's always good. So it's continues, and then through that, like through digital. Um, through digital art forms, like we're and like you say in social media, through art we're also able to put up something responsible. I think this is also an issue, like for the past few months, that we get to see different different contents online out there. Yes. And then, what do you want your young? What do you want young people and children um, to know? Mm-hmm. You know. So that's the big question. That's why we have to be responsibly creative. Right, Sir Punch? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. Ang ganda nun. We have to be responsib- uh, responsibly creative. Uh, uh, yes, anything to add, Sir Pancho? Yes. Uh, actually, we had our uh, online exhibits ongoing. The title is Octobras. October Brass. Ang ganda. And okay. Another, when we had our uh, online last September, the title is Pinta Pandemia. So, and we have our another Bicol group. Uh, what is that? The online, it's ongoing also. Uh, Burugkos. Burugkos means to unite. So, it's uh, through social media, we use that, this kind of uh, practice. And uh, maganda naman. May nabebenta, may, mayroon na sold out. Like hey, me. Congrats. <laughs> Ay, congrats po. Before um, I proceed to Miss Beach and Miss Honey, anything to plug, Miss Karina and Sir Pancho, where we can follow, like, or check out the website? Okay. Um, like for me, you can follow our activities and get involved through our page, Art Dialogo Asia. So you can look at us up on Facebook, Art Dialogo okay. Asia. Okay. Art Dialogo Asia yan, guys. So, follow nyo. I-like nyo na pagkatapos itong stream na to. How about you, Sir Pancho? Sa akin naman, yung aking page, yung aking page, Pancho Piano, and website, www.panchopiano.com. So, All yan right. lang. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Pancho. Uh, Miss Peach, para po sa inyo, ano po yung rule ng social media in promoting online exhibits and tours? A very big role because I promote in Facebook and in my Instagram so that's just where I get my tourists and then when my friends or, or friends in Facebook or Instagram uh, see my post they are the ones actually inviting the people they know and you know uh, I really like posting uh, every day so I made sure that for 2020 from January 1 until yesterday because I have not posted today. I did not miss a day. So it's wow. like I'm posting a bit. So it could be like, for example, last May. Last May is the arts. Uh, what was that? Uh, it, it was about a month about a uh, museum. So or heritage month, heritage month. So May is heritage month. So what I did is I posted from May 1 to 31 all the things that I've bought from different places in the Philippines. And then I posted that with my sister or my brother, their photo holding that one, and then telling them about it. Like for example, a Tinalak. So I posted it and then they will know something about Tinalak. So I guess social media. So instead of, of you know, reading about the statistics 
of how many already is positive of the virus, of all the news, of everything, bad news. So I guess I, I want to counter that with things that are fun, that are, you know, historical, that can uh, also invite them to visit uh, provinces. So I've I've found out that out of the 81 provinces that we have, I guess I've already visited 63 because every day also last May, I would post one picture of a province that I've visited. So wow. it's like I'm promoting the province so that when we can all travel again, then Alam na natin. the places. Yes. Miss Peach, ano po yung pwede naming i-like na page na yan? So I have so many pages, but my, my main one is Papel de Liha. Papel, Papel de Liha? Pa- yes. De Liha. Papel, like de Liha. some paper. Papel yeah, de Liha. Paper. Liha. And yes. um, habang nagsasalita kayo, Miss Beach, na-realize ko, kasi we, for the past years, I've been hearing people de- uh, parang demonizing social media. Yan, kaka-Facebook mo yan, kaka-Instagram mo yan. But then we've come to realize this pandemic. It's not how much time you spend with social media. It's about how you spend your time with social media. Now, if you use social media to educate yourself, to appreciate art, to um, appreciate your history, your culture, to view tours, to view online exhibits, then it's a good way. It's a good social media time for you. And for sure, hindi na magagalit yung mga nanay nyo at tatay nyo. At hindi na kayo susabihan ng, yan, kaka-social media mo yan. Yes, kaka-social media mo yan. Kaya marami tayong natutunan. Kaya nagiging mas uh, mas proud ka bilang Pilipino. Anything to add, Miss Karina? Yeah, like talking about that, like skill sharing, very important uh-huh. now and very accessible through technology. Kaya i-add ko na lang din, i-promote ko yung aming YouTube uh, for sure. channel. It's also the same name, Art Dialogo Asia, and the, and then you'll see our art tutorials there. Um, Sining Kuela. It just all started during the Philippine Heritage Month, actually. Wow. Last May, yeah, with the Philippine Embassy in Singapore. Yeah, oh and then you know, it's just for yun nga skill sharing very important sa panahon ngayon. E para ano yun sabi nila? Um, evil grows in an idle mind. So wow. para walang ganyan. <laughs> yes, to Miss Karina, thank you. As a Wow, ako, oh, oh guys ha, pagka-subscribe nyo dito sa GPS TV, ayun na, Art Dialogo, yun na yung sunod nyong i-anot, yung famous page. Mamaya, pagkatapos itong stream na to, tapusin nyo muna. <laughs> and last but not the least, our lovely guest here, Miss Honey. Um, what is the role of social media for you in promoting online exhibits and tours? Of course, it was a very big role. Before the pandemic, to be honest, I was not that much a person of technology. I just used Instagram or Facebook for fun or sometimes to give some uh, information about Iran or announce some festivals here because most of the most of the people in the world don't know completely my country and sometimes they have wrong imagination about it. I used to use Instagram and Facebook to give information and introduction about my country or sometimes sharing my memories with my tourists. But after the pandemic, to learn more, first it was first step for me to learn and then I could just exhibit or represent it to others I started to use different uh, applications and platforms. YouTube helped me a lot to learn, of course. And then for having my virtual tools, again, different platforms, different platforms, which in some circumstances, they were difficult to use based around situations, sometimes no. So even it was a process for me to find the platforms that, that can be used here in a good way uh, to don't be disconnected time by time and these things. So I think it played a big role in our life, especially in my profession. You know, it's not just talking. 
So I needed platforms to give me this chance to share my screen, to just let the participants to talk, to share their ideas. Yeah, I think it was very important in guiding virtual tools. Thank you, Ms. Hani. And also, we will not meet you if it wasn't because of uh, online and social media. So thank you so much for what you do. Thank you for loving Pinoy audiences as much as we love you. Uh, I hope I can also visit your tours very soon. Uh, thank you. Mabuhay po kayo. Thank you, Ms. Karina, Sir Pancho, Ms. PG, and Ms. Hani. It's been a very artsy afternoon. But before I let you go, can I encourage everyone to do the GPS move with me? Uh, <laughs> si audiences, uh, feeling ko alam na na ng audience natin, nag-practice kami before. Pero kulwari hindi kami nag-practice. Kung the spot to, guys. <laughs> now, uh, here on GPS TV, we will always, always, always remind you to help us regain and get back up in our tourism industry. But, of course, before anything else, we have to hashtag... Thanks. Hashtag go safe, go safe, go safe, go travel, go travel, go travel, go Philippines, go Philippines, so high, so high. Thank you so much, yes. our dear guests. Yes. Wow. 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 wow, 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 shocks. Itang parang, yeah. parang birthday. Ako yeah. ano yung birthday. Yeah. For you. Oh, thank you, thank you, sir. Give me your address. I will send it to you. Wow, wow, wait lang. <laughs> Feeling ko talaga na nasa reality TV ako. Thank you, thank you, sir Punch. Oh my God, okay. thank, thank you. you. Wow, okay. Um, focus, ayaw focus. Wow, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, sir Punch, Miss Karina, Miss PJ, and Miss Hani. Maraming salamat po. Salamat. Mabuhay po kayong lahat. And sa inyo on Facebook and YouTube, maraming salamat for joining us. That was truly a value-adding experience. And for all you here, uh, I hope you also follow the Facebook pages that we mentioned earlier and YouTube channel. You can replay so you can to take note of the words. Now, thank you also, of course, to Hotel Sales and Marketing Association or HSMA, the Department of Tourism, and the Tourism Promotions Board for making this show possible. And para sa inyong lahat, tulong-tulong talaga tayo ngayong pandemia. Huwag yun kakalimutan. Hindi kayo nag-iisa, guys. And sana marami nga kayo natutunan at nalaman tungkol sa safe and mindful traveling through the perspective and lens of appreciating art. Always plan your trips and consider the health situation of your family, your resources, and the location you're going to, syempre. On top of that, on top of the strict medical protocols, yan, so that everyone can safely enjoy, including the rest of the people around you. Talagang, sa panahon ngayon, may papakita natin ang bayanihan. Diba? Sa pamamagitan ng pagiging mapagmagtsag na manlalakbay. Always remember that for everyone to enjoy a worry-free travel experience. Thank you so much to our art, to our artists, to our beloved artists. We have, of course, dito sa GPS TV, we always remind you to hashtag go safe, go travel, go safe before you go travel including virtual tours na yan, di ba? Until the next slide, this has been your online travel buddy, Aya Fernandez. Watch out for more episodes and see you on here on GPS TV. Go Philippines! Soar high! Music